This month, New York City Ballet is celebrating, the New York City Ballet is celebrating its 75th anniversary. To open their season, they hosted a reunion, inviting dancers from decades past to meet the new generation. Christina Ruffini got a peek behind the curtain in how the company's legendary founder has helped it thrive and survive for more than seven decades. A George Balanchine ballet can be many things. Elegant. Cheeky. Sentimental. But the heart of Balanchine's work is the dancers at its core. What does it mean to be a dancer in the New York City Ballet? I think that it means that you love to work and to to truly dance. It's not an easy gig? It's not an easy gig. I think India Bradley, Miriam Miller, ballet, and Dominika Afaneskov are part of an elite ensemble. My first performance here, you, the curtain comes up and you're like, okay, wow, this yeah. is <laughs> this is pretty cool, yeah. Since its founding 75 years ago, the New York City Ballet has been home to some of the world's best dancers. We get to dance so much, no matter if you're a soloist, principal, or in the core, the amount of just ballets we do on a weekly basis is uh, indescribable. But the real star has always been the company and its legendary founder, a Russian turned American, known to generations of dancers as simply Mr. B. What is it about his technique, his choreography that has endured? Well, I think the musicality, the beauty, the Intensity. Kay Mazzo joined New York City Ballet in 1961 at age 15. Balanchine came and taught us every day. He taught class every morning. What's your favorite memory of him? Probably his standing in the wings, the front wing, every night watching us dance. Wasn't that terrifying? You know, you got so used to it. <laughs> After learning ballet in the strict Soviet tradition, Balanchine danced his way through the Iron Curtain to Europe where he began experimenting with the kind of choreography that would become his trademark. So what Mr. B has done, which is very funny, is he puts like a shimmy in and follows it up by an entrechassis, which is a classical ballet step. But his avant-garde, often plotless ballets, like this later work inspired by commercial air travel, sometimes met mixed reviews. For ballet critics of expertise, there may be many reasons for liking or not liking this ballet. In 1934, Balanchine moved to New York to start a school that would teach dancers to move the way he wanted. Is it hand? Should be that finger. What is the difference between the Balanchine aesthetic and, and other, other styles? It's knowing what you're doing with your body at every moment. It's the energy you put into every moment that you're dancing. It's the thought process that's going on about what's happening with your little finger. Then in 1948, the New York City Ballet was born. I don't want to claw there, yeah. 90 years on, the School of American Ballet, where Mazo now teaches, is still the proving ground for the company. I love the fact that we have students here who have to dance and that we're teaching them what Balanchine taught us. But Balanchine's biggest lesson was innovation, creating more than 400 works before his death in 1983. The point of the company was not to be a museum company. It's not to go, we're gonna rest on our laurels. For principal dancers Daniel Ulbricht and Indiana Woodward, there's not a lot of rest, period. Frequently learning new commissions alongside beloved standards. We're adaptive. And I think that that's what Balanchine, that's what he did, was he adapted. A lot. I think that he was such an advocate for new works. Works from creatives like Justin Peck. Not a double rotation because then it's like it gives you a glimpse of her. The company's current resident choreographer. It's an honor for a dancer to get to like engage with a choreographer and make something new for the stage here. Despite the fact that there is this kind of looming legacy of great nice. dance makers that have influenced so many of us, including myself. The work becomes its, its own thing. Like it, it kind of takes on its own existence. And that's something Balanchine understood. Performances can be repeated, but never replicated. Changing with the times, the setting, and the dancers in the core. 75 years from now, I 
do think that the company will be alive and well with dancers that care to keep the history alive. For CBS Saturday Morning, Christina Ruffini, New York. So beautiful. I, the whole time I'm watching that, all I'm thinking is like, I want to be that elegant <laughs> and graceful and pay attention to my hands and not have a claw. You and dance? No, I what? can't do that. Dance? No. I can't do that. I know you want me to get do you it. Wanna, do you want to dance? No, no, no. Mm. Okay. But it's beautiful. Well, I'm not going to dance, so <laughs> what do you guys have to? I would love to take Victoria. She would love it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love how we get to see all the rehearsals in Christina's piece, you know, behind the curtain with their messy buns and, you know, just regular leotards. It's like, love that. Yeah.